thank you very much, President uh, Tom. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here tonight. I've attended this event every year since uh, 1985. Uh, I first came here as a citizen of Nova Scotia, interested in sports and honoring those who are involved in sport and who uh, are successful and, and exemplary. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, uh, are indeed deserve the recognition that this event is bestows upon them for what they have given to sport in the province of Nova Scotia. I'm here tonight on behalf of the government of Nova Scotia. As Minister of Sport and Recreation, it is indeed my pleasure to bring greetings from the government and from the Premier, John Savage. Uh, this event has uh, been a highlight of um, mine every year since 1985. I uh, was a member of the Board of Directors for a couple of years, and then I was Chair of the Board of Directors for uh, three years. And now it is really a pleasure to come back as Minister of Sport and Recreation to be uh, a supporter of this event in another way. The partnerships that has built between all of the sponsors, uh, Canadian Airlines and especially Coca-Cola and the uh, Board of Directors of the, of the Sport Heritage Centre and uh, the Government of Nova Scotia has indeed uh, built this event into be a, well, quite the prestigious event in sport in Nova Scotia every year. Uh, it's a pleasure to see uh, the uh, previous inductees, the Hall of Famers that are here tonight that I was around when they were inducted. And it's good to see them again. And I especially want to congratulate those who are being inducted tonight. I know uh, some of them personally, and I know that they, they do indeed deserve this uh, honor that's being bestowed upon them. And given the uh, award that was just presented prior to my coming to the stage, the Sport Heritage Center is built on volunteerism, as it are most sporting, uh, the, uh, sporting uh, groups in Nova Scotia. And I want to congratulate Sandy personally because I know what the work he puts into the center and uh, I think that it's a very well-deserved award as well as all those who have gone before him. And I think that I'd like to congratulate the board of directors again and thank you for having me and I hope you have another successful evening and another successful year. So thank you very much. to this event and been very active at the center, Joel Jacobson. Joel has been the awards night chairman for all 14 years and has also been responsible for publishing our very fine program. Chairman of the Hall of Fame Selection Committee and has been a dedicated volunteer and friend of the Center for over 10 years. We are honored to have this sport heritage legend as our co-host again this year. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat Conn. Thank you, Tom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I say at first that it is indeed a privilege and an honor to find myself in this role again tonight. To be with all of you and to share the excitement of the evening with the nine additions or their representatives to the honor roll of athletic excellence in Nova Scotia. The quality of our 1993 inductees is further affirmation of the richness of our sports heritage in this province, something we very often tend to take for granted. Each of tonight's inductees, each in their own way, has left an indelible imprint in the Nova Scotia landscape of sports achievement. Each has established a standard of excellence in their respective fields that leaves no doubt about their rightful presence in the Nova Scotia Sport Heritage Hall of Fame, the ultimate recognition of excellence. The selection process from a lengthy list of worthy candidates is never easy. And I would like to thank members of the selection committee and congratulate them for another difficult job. Very well done. Please meet the members of our conscripted volunteers. From the Highlands, Mr. John Packy McFarland.
From the Valley, Winnie Horton. From the South Shore, Mr. Jim Brown. From Central, Elizabeth Chard. And our member at large, Harris Sullivan. <laughs> Members unable to be with us tonight are Kenny McDonald from Cape Breton and Dave Randall from Funday, but they send their warmest greetings and best wishes. It would be quite impossible to stage this event without the wonderful cooperation we receive on a regular basis, basis from our corporate sponsors and our premier sponsor for tonight's event, Coca-Cola. And it gives me great pleasure at this time to introduce the sales supervisor for Coca-Cola, Mr. Jim Chancy. stayed to educate all of us about the glittering history of sports in Nova Scotia. His has been a labor of discovery because his original curiosity about a province that produced world boxing champions like George Dixon and Sam Langford led him to a mother load of information which he has painstakingly documented in his publications. You're going to enjoy him tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my co-host, for this 14th annual Nova Scotia Sport Heritage Awards Night, Dr. Sandy Young. I would like to thank Pat uh, for that nice introduction. I'd also like to thank him for the article he wrote about my marriage this summer. Oh. <laughs> Where he announced that my long-standing girlfriend and I got married the woman he mentioned in his column wasn't the woman I married. <laughs> So I make uh, yes, I know where you are, and if you find me, or I'll find you, and we're all done. Our first, uh, our first inductee tonight is James George Allen Creighton. We'll ask Mr. Jim Creighton to come up and take our, our seat of honor. gentlemen, please permit me a few minutes to review the origin of hockey debate since it has never been more relevant to these proceedings. In 1942, they, stuck, they struck a committee in Upper Canada to decide where the home of hockey was. Now that Upper Canadian Lane Committee decided, of course, that the home of hockey was in Upper Canada. They said that the first game ever played was in 1855 in Kingston, that game they described as a wonderful game of hockey on which there were 100 men per side. Now, that kind of hockey actually evolved and, and, and can be traced back practically to the 14th century in, in Europe. It was called bandy, and it was called hurley, and it was called ricket, and it was called wicked, and it was called shinny, uh, it was called any number of things. Eventually, it became known as hockey. Uh, we traced that kind of hockey, and I'm going to quote here from Thomas Chandler Halliburton, famed author of Sam Slick. 
He described his Nova Scotian childhood in an 1844 London, England periodical called Attaché. Halliburton, who was born in 1796, wrote, and the boys let out racing, yelling, hollering, and whooping, and like mad with pleasure in the playground, and the game of bass in the fields, or hurley on the long pond on the ice. The hurley to which he referred obviously took place in the very early 1800s, probably 1810. And it took place on Long Pond, which still sits on Howard Dill's property in Windsor, Nova Scotia. So that kind of hockey, that kind of hockey, and we have all kinds of other accounts here. Night 1831, there has been an excellent skating on the Northwest Arm. Large parties of our townsfolk, the military have enjoyed during several afternoons of this in the past week, the healthy and spirited game of Wicked, same game. Visitor to an East River iron foundry described a game in the Colonial Patriot of July 30th, 1833. The scene was diversified the day we were there by a game of hurley in which about 100 miners were laboring with all their might. I got a whole page full, I won't waste your time, other than to say we had so much hurley hockey uh, in Nova Scotia before 1855 that uh, I don't want to bore you with it. Uh, I'm skipping here. All right. There are also references to shinty, which is the same game, on skates being played in Ottawa in 1852, and even a few indicated that they played hurley on ice in the United States in the 1830s. It was perhaps these references which finally caught the attention of the nearsighted men who were so fast to credit Kingston, Ontario as hockey's home. When the powers of the hockey world finally realized that the Kingston claim couldn't possibly be defended, even to themselves, they stated that after rethinking the question, the origin of hockey wasn't in Kingston in 1855, it was rather at a later date in some other upper Canadian city. <laughs> In Nova Scotia, the first written evidence of the game being referred to as hockey's in 1859. As Creighton biographer Garth Vaughan points out, James Creighton would have been nine at this time. This is the game actually being called hockey. At any rate, the hockey moguls decided that to be considered an organized sport rather than a folk game. A sport needed agreement on a standard field of play and on equipment. It needed standard rules which had to be accepted so that a winner and loser could be determined. And the sport had to continue so that through change, though change would inevitably occur, the game would be traceable and recognizable throughout its history. The game which met these standards said they was played in 1875 in the Victoria Rink in Montreal. This game is undisputed. Nor do scholars dispute the fact that the rules of the game in question were referred to as the Halifax rules. <laughs> scholars don't dispute it, but upper Canadian hockey scholars seem always to ignore it. As we quickly trace the life and times of James George Aylwin Creighton, our first inductee tonight, it will become evident that he and he alone should be credited with conceiving, organizing, and bringing the Montreal game to fruition. His father, William Hudson Creighton, was a skating enthusiast who took part in several skating carnivals at the Halifax Skating Rink. His appreciation and skills he passed on to his son. Creighton was born in Halifax in He worked on railway construction here in Halifax and then moved to Montreal in 1873, where he worked on the Intercolonial Railway, the Lachine Canal, and many other such projects. He also studied law at McGill, graduated BCL with first rank honors in 1880, and was eventually appointed law clerk at the Senate, a position he held until his death in 1930. In 1873, Creighton managed to, to gain enough uh, of an access to the indoor Victoria rink for sessions in which he taught his rugby cronies the rudiments of hockey. They even bribed the caretaker to let them in the rink to practice on Sundays. Of course, this was a no-no of this day. Skating rink members and McGill students became interested, and Creighton helped them too. Creighton's rugby team and the rink team, made up primarily of McGill students, met on March 3rd, 1875, to play in what, was become, what has become known as the first hockey game ever. Creighton's ties to hockey didn't end there. According to his own notes, he was the captain of the first regular hockey club to be formed in Montreal in 1877. And in 1888, he began coaching and playing for the Rideau Hall Rebels in Ottawa. 
In 1889, the recreational team Club in Ottawa. Henry Joseph, in a 1936 article, credits Creighton with being the undisputed father of hockey in Canada. Creighton himself never claimed the title, not because he wasn't, but because he didn't take the game or the claim all that seriously. In fact, in an 1882 article Creighton wrote for Picturesque Canada, he referred to lacrosse as Canada's national game. Just as an aside, lacrosse is not Canada's national game although many, many people think it was once pronounced so. Certainly officially it is not. While he didn't concern himself with the origin of Canadian hockey the way we do, the facts speak for themselves. How good a source was this Henry Joseph guy? Who laid the unqualified title on Creighton, father of hockey? Henry Joseph was one of the 18 men to play in that original 1875 game. Ladies and gentlemen, our first inductee tonight, the Nova Scotia Sport Heritage Center Hall of Fame, whether he wants to be or not, is the father of Canadian hockey, James George Aylwin Creighton. We would ask uh, Patty Hutchinson, the curator of the Nova Scotia Sport Heritage Hall of Fame, if she would join us on stage to make this uh, presentation, please. Thank you. Move uh, a little closer to the center of the stage, Jimmy, where more people can see us. Incidentally, uh, could we have that chair, Sandy, moved a little closer to the front, please, for television purposes? Apparently, they're not able to pick it up on cameras, but that should, that should fix the situation. Jim, uh, congratulations. As a member, as a Creighton, you have to be a very proud man tonight. Oh, yes, indeed. Very proud to be here. Perhaps you could establish uh, your relationship to the uh, honored member. All right. He, we shared a common ancestor. His grandfather was my great-great-grandfather. And that grandfather lived in a house on Hollow Street. And I think most people would recognize it, the one next to the Liquor Commission with all the vines. Up the Everybody side. recognizes the house next to the Liquor Commission. <laughs> that was his grandfather's home, and it still stands. Okay. Um, when did you first become aware of, of your uh, ancestors' uh, direct involvement with the uh, formation of hockey? I think it was a few years ago. I found a newspaper article tucked among the family papers. And I was rather intrigued with the idea, and I hoped one day I'd find out more, and now it's happening. Have, uh, did this set you off on a personal search for more information about him? It set me off on a search for a more family history, and, and uh, this James was on my list of next to look into. And uh, one of the things that intrigued me was his striking, uh, his resemblance to my brother, who should have been here tonight but couldn't. Um, they look very much alike. You're aware, of course, as a matter of fact, I think you're, you're a part of it. The uh, the uh, move right now undertaken by the Windsor uh, Hockey Society and Dr. Garth Vaughan to establish Windsor as the birthplace of hockey and uh, James Creighton as the founder. Mm -hmm. well, that's good news. Good news for Nova Scotia. Well, he started something big. Too bad he wasn't around today to witness some of the salaries. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just had recreation in mind, didn't he? he did. Come a long way, baby. Thanks very much, Jim, and continued good luck. Congratulations to the entire family.